to our podcast in collaboration with Yellow Owl. We are Le Capri and this is our sign name. My name is Lerato and I'd like to introduce my partner Daylene. Hello everyone, I'm Crazy D and our guest today is John. Hello, how are you? Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you for welcoming me here in collaboration with Yellow Owl and the Capri. Thank you for your time. Mm, I have goosebumps. This is my sign name. John is my name. Welcome. We are excited to have you here and look forward to asking you some questions. I would like to ask how you accepted your HIV status. Ooh, that was a difficult time for me. Mm -hmm. My first experience was going to the clinic. I got tested. Mm -hmm. The doctor did not give me counseling. He broke the news that I was already infected with the virus. I was devastated and very, very emotional. I went home and I cried. Mm. From that point, I realized there was no need to worry because the experience is common throughout the world. I had to accept it. I had to. Mm. However, accepting my HIV status was difficult for me. A person by the name of Ruth Morgan, who was my senior at the time, um, was incredibly helpful. You know? She encouraged me to get a second opinion at a bigger hospital like um, Baraguanath. The results were the same. I was HIV positive. Mm. I tested positive mm. both times mm. and then accepted my status. What I didn't understand was Hold HIV. on! Mm? When you accepted your HIV positive status, you hadn't yet received counselling? Yes, yes. I didn't receive any counselling. Oh goodness, it was incredibly difficult. Fortunately, Ruth helped me and found an interpreter. Her name is Andy Swan and she interpreted the counseling mm. sessions for me. Mm. I got all the information I needed and it was such a relief, you know? I was grateful for her time. However, I, did, I didn't know where the virus came from or did I know what ARVs were. The doctor just gave me a cocktail of medication and I was clueless about it. Mm. I took the medication at home and when I went to work, Ruth explained to me what the medication was for and its effects. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ruth was very helpful indeed. However, a person named Edwin Cameron. He is a judge. Yes. Do you know him? Yes, I know no, him. No, I don't know him. He's well known for being a gay rights activist, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. He's a prominent gay rights activist. Ruth asked me if I would like to attend his 20 year celebration of living with HIV. Mm. I wasn't sure. I mm. wasn't sure. Mm. But we went together. The auditorium okay. was packed and his keynote address was phenomenal and so valuable for the following reasons. He was gay, white, and had been living with HIV for 20 years, all three. That got me thinking about disclosing my own status. Hmm. I wanted to be a role model like him. After some time, I decided to disclose my thesis mm. to the deaf community. Mm. Yeah, if people stay, so what? Mm. So what? I didn't care mm. if people looked at me. I believe that it would play a massive role in me living with my status. I'm very grateful for his contribution. Wow, that's very interesting. When you came out to the deaf community about being gay and lesbian, did you get support and encouragement? Did they learn from you? For example, if other deaf people have the same experience as you, where would they go for counseling? Where would they go for counseling and how does it happen? Ah, okay, okay. Thank you for that point. Firstly, I am gay. Mm -hmm. I disclosed my HIV status on a TV program called DTV. From there, the deaf community stigmatized me as gay. And I hid in the community. But then I decided mm -hmm, not to be ashamed. I mm -hmm. came out. Mm -hmm. After some time, more and more people started coming out as gay and I like that because that's life you know it's difficult but you can't hide who you are more and more people started coming out and they started working at Gala the gay and lesbian center hold on please tell us more about Gala okay thank you 
Gala stands for Gay and Lesbian Archive, mm -hmm. right? They collect and record information and narratives about oh. gay and lesbian people. Oh. My project focused on mm -hmm. a deaf mm -hmm. group. Yeah. Ruth gave me the opportunity to be involved in the deaf project, mm. including the gay and lesbian project, sharing the oral mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. There was also the HIV positive project. These were the two aspects. The project was were targeted at schools regionally and provincially without any funding. Mm. Sure. The project mm. entailed interviewing people who were deaf, mm. gay, and lesbian in Durban, Cape Town, and Gauteng only. Mm. Yeah, just just those places. Mm -hmm. My focus was specifically on black people, not white people. White people are open about their status and live mm -hmm. live with. Mm -hmm. mm. I wanted to archive the struggles faced by black people. I gave a presentation and after some time mm -hmm. um, about being HIV positive. Oh hang on. Uh, yeah. After some time about being HIV positive. Mm -hmm. From my experience, Elo taught across different schools and around 2016, 2017. I th yeah, I think around 2016, 2017. I'm not sure. Ruth asked me to visit Sisula School for the Deaf and for the HIV Positive Project. I agreed. Yeah. We conducted a workshop for learners between grade 8 and 9 and after the presentation, the questions they asked me made me realize they did not understand what HIV meant. Yeah. It was painful. Mm. It was painful because I am open about being gay and HIV positive. It's who I am. They thought that I was sickly and dying, which wasn't the case. They finally got it. Deaf and is believe myths from hearing people. Myths. Mm. Mm -hmm. I found the questions very interesting and painful. They would say things like, people say, if you have HIV, you won't be okay. You're not okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, let me tell you, even myths about sperm. You know that? Sperm. You know that? Saying things like, if you have sex, you must not ejaculate. If, because if someone ejaculates inside of you, you'll be fat. Really? <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I found that very, very Come interesting. Come on. It's misinformation. <laughs> it's a myth. Yeah. It's a myth. Mm -hmm. So many myths. I was angry. After a while, I started attending workshops presented by hearing people. I spoke boldly conferences and blamed hearing people for the myths within the deaf community. Deaf people believe these myths. Hold on. You see, what I find interesting is the difference between the deaf and hearing community. Hearing people have more access to information, knowledge and learning about being HIV positive or negative. Deaf people, mm. on the other hand, have limited knowledge. For example, ELO classes taught in schools don't cover all the information. It's little. Like now, deaf people think, if I have HIV, I will die tomorrow. So is it an educational issue? It's mm, I agree with you. I agree mm. with you. I'm concerned about LO. Personally, I'm fed up with what I see. Schools. LO is most effective when taught practically. Textbooks drop a lot of information. The reason being that such topics touch on sensitive issues like vaginas. That's true. true. Yeah. Yeah. I give my when I give my presentations, um, direct mm -hmm. and explicit. This mm -hmm. is the vagina. Mm -hmm. Any growth or swelling is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Watch out. This is a penis. I'm direct. Hearing people always cringe when I become too graphic, but. You can't. Mm, mm. I didn't care. I continued teaching. And the deafness finally understood. Yeah. What causes confusion is terminology. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. The Department of Health also causes confusion by using difficult terms. It's a problem created by them. Deaf and hearing alike is confusing the same. Both and deaf and hearing communities. The same confusion, you see? Mm. AIDS 
is just that. It's straightforward. HIV, on the other hand, can either be positive or negative. The distinction is very important. Terminology about HIV brings fear among people. What is that fear about? Hmm. There, there you have it. So, during the pandemic, have you been able to access your treatment? Oh my goodness. Oh, my experience last year. Mm. The sudden pandemic caused a lot of emotional anxiety because I had to stay at home. Sure. Fuck. What could I try to do? I can imagine. Yeah. When President Ramaphosa announced the strict lockdown regulations that no one was allowed to leave their homes, if you didn't get fined, fuck, what was I going to do? My treatment supply was running out. Shit. You can imagine. Shit. Yeah. If the police arrest me, what will I do? My hearing doctor reassured me. Name David Khadebe. We texted via WhatsApp. He told me to relax. And luckily, you made contact. Mm. I was worried about getting my medication. He told me to relax and calm down. How was I going to get my treatment? How? Don't stress, calm down. Thank you. I was grateful for the reassurance. I went back on my treatment. It was such a relief. My daughter told me I was allowed to leave the house to go to the clinic. Mm. Yeah? I needed a written permission from the doctor. How would I go to the clinic without it? Mm, yes. Anyways, my daughter again reassured me and told me it's good to go. I asked him what would I what happen if I get fined and arrested. He told me not to stress. So okay. I left home relaxed. I was relaxed, I arrived at the clinic, alright, collected my treatment, everything was fine. It was such a relief. And you come straight home. Mm -hmm. And how has the pandemic and lack of treatment affected your mental health? Your you know, health did you pull through and how? Yo, yo, yo. It was extremely difficult. Life was difficult. Did you get any counseling? No, not at mm. all. Thanks to the advice from my doctor. He sent me step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. No problems. We've known each other for many years. How, how long have you been living with HIV? <laughs> for 20 years. 20 years, that's amazing. Shit, 20 years. <sighs> Yeah, 20 years. I'm still sexy. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, you're still sexy. Mm. Yes. You have been HIV and a gay activist for 20 years. Wow. Damn. That's amazing. Thanks to it, Win. It's because of him. Mm. You can imagine. That's true. I didn't know. People were dying around me. It was scary. Because of Edwin, I'm very grateful for him. What saddens me is that he's no longer there. We've never made contact. So, sure. It's been a struggle. And up until now, I have experience working at Gala. Yes. Gala is an organization for gay, lesbian, and LGBT guy people like myself who have already come out. I decided to resign because of contractual problems, chaos I didn't want to get involved in. And that was the end of it. More people started coming out. Seven transgender people. That was my first encounter with transgender people. I've never heard of them before. Transgender. Let me tell you. I tried with my one friend, Jab, a transgender male. We knew each other and I got his thoughts about starting a project. He agreed. The following year, which is now two years ago, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the seven transgender people. Okay. You can imagine. Seven. Amazing. Not too old. Younger age around. Yeah. yeah. 18, yeah. 18, yeah. 18, yeah. 18, yeah. 18 yeah. to 30 yeah. years. Quite young. Okay. I had contact with seven people and everything was good. We approached an organization called Iranati. Yes. Yes, that focuses on transgender people to attend workshops. You can imagine training, workshops, and sharing of experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. The second time, yeah, the next time, we were disappointed. Why? Why? They, they vanished. vanished. They disappeared. Why? They disappeared. Oh, I tried. They, I messaged them, asked them what's happening. 
we are looking for funding, we need money. Okay, I waited. We got the transgender project with three people. Oh. The three names were Ava, mm -hmm. Kate, mm -hmm. and Danny. Mm -hmm. All three are transgender and need body modifying injections. Oh. Mm. The other four were not truly transgender, but I helped them anyway. Mm. All good. The problem was no interpreter was available. Oh, goodness. No access. Wow. Yes, yes, that's true. I tried and asked Petri to interpret. He willingly interpreted for us until the end. The next time there was no budget. Which, was, which I found so strange because I was under the impression there was already a budget. That's a big problem experienced yeah. by many in the gay and lesbian community who need to share the experiences. No access to psychologists, mm. mental mm. health care, mm. body modification. Mm. However, organizations misuse funds. Why? Mm. It's quite sad. Mm. They should be supported mm. more. What I find interesting is LGBTQI organizations run by hearing people have access when, when deaf people start an organization, upgrade itself and look for help, mm -hmm. it falls apart. Mm -hmm. I'm tired, I tried, I'm tired, it, I'm tired, I tried. As an LGBTQI deaf person, I'm tired, I'm telling you straight. Yes, I can set up an organization, but what is everyone else doing? Sitting back and waiting for me. Yeah. No, they must stand up for themselves. But you can't give up, keep going. Yes, I agree. I'm not giving up, yes. I know, but it's frustrating. They must stand up for themselves. Mm. I need their help. It's a lot. I can't. But another problem that you encounter in the deaf community is that you don't know where to go. Some deaf, gay and lesbian people in the community don't have access to information. We encounter many barriers to access. All you want to know is where to go for help. Many people in the deaf community rely on organizations run by hearing people. What about deaf organizations? Mm. Yes, I'm sorry. That's true. I tried. I'm sorry. I, I tried. It's okay. No need to apologize because you tried. Life goes on. But what you should do, something for them. Yes, life does go on. Thank you. Who's advising them? What advice are they getting? You could advise the deaf community about accepting themselves. How would you advise them? Who? You! You can advise them what to do. What you can do is, when a deaf person accepts themselves as gay or lesbian, but are scared to come out, you can advise them how. Precisely. I've counseled a few people. Hmm. The problem is, they talk carelessly about human rights. It doesn't mean that. No. It doesn't mean human rights. They think being gay you know that I'm gay. Mm. They don't know. <laughs> anyway, I advise them. And when I'm done, after some time, the very same person will spread rumors telling a different story. Yeah. Mm. So what must yeah. I do? Don't know. I, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. I want to ask you a question. Do you have any project you are currently doing so far? Are you planning any project? Mm, yes, I do have a project. However, I am battling with it. Ruth and I have been in talks about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know COVID has impacted getting yeah. money. Yeah, yes, that's yeah, true. That's true. Yeah. We both agreed and thought of starting an organization. I feel strongly mm -hmm. about the project, but where is the money? Mm -hmm. We need funding. Continue, don't give up. Yes, secondly, in Denmark. Denmark overseas. Denmark mm -hmm. held an international conference and I was invited to attend. It already took place. I was already invited, but impacted by funds, I had no money. No sponsorship. Exactly. They contacted me directly to attend the conference. I was very excited. Yay, I'm going to Denmark. <laughs> Ruth asked me, do you have the money? <laughs> I said, no, I don't. Will Denmark fund you? 
I said no, mm. they won't. Which for them to introduce? Oh, you're prohibited. You see, lockdown, coronavirus, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So I stayed. They asked me if I could join them by a Zoom, but we don't have funds. Really? I never made it because of lockdown. I understand. So even during lockdown, they continued with the event. They couldn't wait. The work continued. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Even when different entities received funding, they were stuck. They had to find a way and continue. Challenges mm -hmm. will always be there. Mm -hmm. Continue and keep fighting. Precisely. Precisely. The deaf community needs you. Thank you. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. When I die, you guys must take it. No, back. you need to pass <laughs> it on to them. Ah. They need you. If you die, you will still leave a legacy in the deaf community still. Exactly. No. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm battling. <laughs> Your passion will fuel you. You empower the deaf community mm. by also mm. visiting deaf schools. Mm. They will gain something and learn something from you. Have motivational talks at school. Mm. I hope you continue doing it. I agree. I agree. You are my role model. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> oh, hmm? do you know what I experienced during COVID? You know, as deaf people, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's okay. It's fine. Feel free. Continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Continue. Okay. As a deaf person mm -hmm. living through the pandemic, have you visited a clinic wearing a mask? No, it's a I haven't experienced it. It's a communication barrier. Mm, wearing a mask. And you must use a pen and paper. Deaf people have different ways of communicating. Some are oral, others prefer signing with clear facial expression. The interpreter has to wear a mask and keep social distancing, which makes it difficult. Yes, that's true. My experience with wearing a mask is I struggle with writing things down. Sometimes I don't bring a pen and paper to write with, so I use my phone instead with a touch screen and it causes fear. It really does have an impact. It's true. Mm -hmm. My personal experience when I went to Tairuelo Clinic, hmm? I was wearing a mask. Yo, I struggled when I arrived at the mm. clinic. Eh? Yo, yo, no, sorry. I started queuing at security. Keeping a distance of 1 to 5 meters, mm. which is annoying. Yeah, so <laughs> well, it has to be done to protect us. The <laughs> social distancing markers as well. Mm-hmm. Everyone entered one at a time when it, then it was my turn. I told security I couldn't understand through the mask. I can't. Eh. I just said that I was deaf and annoyingly lowered my mask, signaling that I couldn't hear. The security told me to put my mask back on. <coughs> I reluctantly agreed. It didn't matter. Signed in, made my arrival to the clinic. The security and the nurse couldn't understand. <laughs> I struggled again as before. I greeted her and explained that I am deaf and my appointment date was today. I lowered my mask and explained to her she shouted, No, put your mask on. <laughs> but how could I read lips with your mask on? How will I communicate? How will we yeah. communicate with each other? I struggled. She gave me the file and I proceeded to meet the doctor. Then there was a new doctor. I sat down and greeted. Hello, how are you? I just said that I was deaf while wearing my mask. Sorry, what? I lowered my mask and mouthed, I am deaf. Oh, I just said it with my body. Yo, I really struggled. It was a real struggle for me. Another struggle. Sorry, we need to take a break. We will be back. I must relax. <laughs> the break you were telling us about your experience at the clinic okay last time I was at the clinic I had a difficult time wearing a mask I had to lower my mask hence it's difficult with the mask on mm. okay shit I had to write things down knowing pins can't even put back because of COVID-19 yes, yes. Mm -hmm. we had to sanitize yes. regularly fine okay yeah. Very frustrating. 
breathing also becomes difficult behind a mask. Yes, I know. Mm. Mm. Yes, I know. Mm. Anyway, that issue aside, I struggle with my family. You know that I'm talkative. Mm. My inner family circle wears masks. Yes. My family visits my home. Yes. I have no idea what they're saying. Then I say, hold on. Sorry, you need to lower your mask. COVID-19! <laughs> then I put my mask back on. So communicate using pen and paper? Which means That's that awful. when your family comes to visit, they need to wear a mask, sanitize their hands when they enter your home. Yes, yes, but I lower Ooh. mine. It's the same with me. It's hard to keep my mask on. I end up lowering it. It's not easy. Exactly, exactly. When I beg them to lower my mask, they refuse. I must put it back on. Okay, very annoying. Explain to them that I'm deaf. Problem being, I can't see facial expressions. It's the same with my deaf neighbor, my other friend who's deaf. When we meet and chat, we lower our masks. Hey, you see, I explain to them I'm deaf and I need facial expressions. That's true. I don't care. I lower my mask That's and continue true. chatting just fine. That's how it usually is with my family. When, but when my deaf friends come and visit, they lower their masks and we chat. When a family member visits, hey, right up. Put your mask on before you get covered. Taken by surprise. Put a mask on. <laughs> That's true. It's annoying. <laughs> what we should develop is a see-through mask. Maybe that will help us. But the problem is we have see-through masks. The face the shield. Vapor fills the mask and there are drops of saliva that cover the shield. We can't see the face or facial expressions. That's why deaf people prefer lowering their masks. It's the only way, but COVID is still there. Yep, it's a problem. Yeah, indeed, indeed. We have, and they're sold by street vendors. But people who sell these masks and face shields, for majority, I see people in the deaf community want face shields in order to see more facial expression and signing clearly. Remember that most deaf people, that most deaf people love touching their faces. So wearing a mask hinders communication. Exactly. exactly. You know, they lower their masks. That's the only way. Exactly. Imagine. Yeah. I also wanted to ask you, Nam, have you been vaccinated? Oh. I haven't. I haven't. I, I don't know what vaccination is. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't. Um, was it announced that we must get vaccinated? All right. I, a hearing person told me to get to not get vaccinated or else I would die. I'm like, really? I looked at them like, I'm not going to listen to you. I'll see what happens at the clinic. I'll see there. I sent my doctor a letter. Told me to get vaccinated. I remember he said I must balance my body and my immune system and take care of them. Okay, I agreed. I made my way to the clinic. The nurse helped me. Took my weight. I was ecstatic. I weighed 70.6 kg. Luckily. Luckily, you are still sexy. <laughs> <laughs> My body was checked. Everything was perfect. Perfect. I went and joined a very long queue. Fuck. I waited. Finally, it was my turn. I filled in a form. Mm. With all my information, the nurse asked me directly if I was issued a I said yes. Directly, I said with no problem. Yep. I can't lie. Yes. Mm. yes. I said yes. Yes. Took no to all the questions that did not apply, and when I was done, I joined the queue. It was my turn to get vaccinated. I was scared. Um, the injection was bad, not bad mm. at all. I just didn't know the name of the vaccine. I didn't know which vaccine I was given. It's written on the card. Hold on. Wait, wait. I didn't know the name of the vaccine. Fine, I got the jab, and I was done. As I was leaving the clinic, a hearing person would pass me talking, and I didn't understand what he was saying. And I didn't consider myself. When I got home, I was pleased to tell my family that I got vaccinated. Look at me. Hey, you. You got vaccinated, you will die. Straight to my face. Shit. Your penis will stop breaking. I looked at them like, and dismissed them. What's your problem? I asked. Nonsense. Anyways, I was happy to tell my friends. You'll get erectile dysfunction. <laughs> Goodness. That's rubbish. It's the same issue. Remember we talked about myths, remember? Yes, it's, it's a, a myth. myth. It's a myth. It's a myth. Do you get me? I want to ask you a question about the vaccine. Did your doctor allow you to get vaccinated? Would being HIV positive affect your yes, system? Yes, my doctor agreed. The next day, I did something naughty. I drank alcohol <laughs> that I wasn't supposed to. You're not supposed to drink. Ah, hold on, hold on. I, I was informed to wait seven days. 
all 14 days. I didn't listen. You see. I had some alcohol and felt tipsy. And when I was done, I felt fine. I went home and I slept, but I had nightmares. <laughs> I woke up quickly, I woke up quickly. Shut up. What's happening? What's happening? Yo. What's happening? Shut, shut. That was it's awful. That's why I was getting nightmares. Sure, I was wide awake the following day. I put on my face, greeted everyone. I was shy. I was actually very shy. Is everyone good? You weren't impacted at all. Mm, from there, I was relaxed. I had no issues at all. No nothing, no impact. Okay, no nothing. perfect, perfect. I must get vaccinated soon. Yes, I must. Oh, good. Everything was fine. There are two kinds of vaccines. Um, Johnson, which is good. Johnson. And the other one is Pfizer. No, yeah, the first one, yes, that one. That's the one I got, Johnson & Johnson. It was my second jab. Pfizer was my first jab. Once I was finished, then you have it. I feel good. I'm all right. Perfect. I feel good. Daylene? Thank you, thank you. Wow. Thank you. I believe we both learned a lot from John, right? Absolutely. You were amazing. We loved your interview. Brilliant. Mm. Wow. We appreciate Oh, thank God. you for your time. Thank you for sharing. Mm. We appreciate that. I hope that the audience learned a lot from you. Thank you. I hope you will give me a gift. Yes. Oh, oh, please. Please. oh please. Oh, please. Oh, please. <laughs> we'll give you eggs. Uh, excuse me. I'm a man. A handsome man. My organs Jeez. are the man. Look at him. Okay. 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 <laughs> thank you for tuning into our podcast. We'll probably see you next time. Cheers. Bye. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching our podcast. You can watch us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Hashtag Alapri. Our next interview is with Simpiwe Mkizem. You can watch through Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, mm -hmm. also like and follow us. Please, please tune in. Do not miss out. Same place, same time. Bye-bye. See you next week. Mwah. Bye.